Hello everyone and welcome back to our fire team chapter 2 part 5 video. In the last episode we worked on our mode selection tool in our lobby. We're now going to be working on the map selection tool and allows us to cycle between different maps and load them into the game. So let's begin. Okay so where we left off last time was we made our menu switcher uh, to choose which um, mode we want to play in. So if we go into the menu settings here, menu UI, we made this, uh, oh not there, sorry, lobby game mode, lobby hard, where is it, lobby UI, there we go. So here we have our lobby mode selection. Uh, so we can make something very similar for the map selection as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna duplicate this and create a copy called lobby map selector. And this is gonna work pretty much the same way except it's going to pull data from somewhere else instead so previously we set up our game to detect game modes from a data table and we can do something very similar okay so we're going to be setting up our maps in a data table too so we're going to create a new data structure we're going to go into data structure f game map and we're going to open this up and the game maps are going to be pretty simple. We're going to have just the name, which will be a text value. And we're going to have a map path. That'll be a string. That's going to refer to the actual file itself that we're going to load up. And we're also going to have an image associated to this as well. So map image be a texture 2D. Okay, so uh, there are three things we're going to have on here. You, you could have other stuff on here too, like little descriptions and other little uh, cosmetic things if you wish. But for now, this is the minimum that we'll need for this. So we're going to close that and we're going to create a data table for this. It's very similar to how we've done a data table for the game modes. So we're going to go to miscellaneous, data table, and choose RF game map. Do DT underscore game map. And open this up now i've imported two maps into my game here i've got uh, the first one which is going to be uh the first row name will be underworld and we'll call this one underworld and the map path will come to later but image will also come to later as well and we'll make another one in here and the code name for our second map is going to be factory and these are literally just code names that are going to be internal use only because we're referring to them. The actual display name will be here. So if you do want to change the name of the level later on, I'd recommend changing it here and not changing the row name instead. Um, but there we go. We've got our two levels set up here. So map path is pretty simple. All we need to do is we need to go find the maps that we want to use. In this case, I've got them in this one. And that's your area demo. We're going to right click on this. And when you right click on the file in any asset, you can get hold of its uh, reference pa uh, path is here. We copy the reference path and then we're going to go into our game mode uh, data table factory and we're going to paste that into the map path. And here you'll see the full level name, uh, level uh, destination and all that stuff all, all here. OK, now the only thing you don't want need don't need in here are the um, apostrophes that get added into here so we can just get rid of those and also anything after the dot yeah so you will see like for example here it says industrial area de underscore demo dot industrial area demo you don't need the dot there you can get rid of that second half of that and we don't need the world or the apostrophe there too so we just need this bit here and do the same for underworld and let's go have a look in there map i'm just going to right click get copy reference and just clean it up okay um next we're going to have some images now to get the images we're just going to go into it, the maps themselves so let's go into underworld whilst we're here so you've had progress so far here we are so now we need to set up a good camera shot for our image here. So I'm going to position the camera like so. 
hit the G key to hide all the game uh, designer assets. So you just see the, the game view. And I'm going to go full screen. And then we go up this little arrow up in the top corner and go high resolution screenshot. And Smart Player 1 will be totally fine. We can click on the button to take a screenshot and click on the link here to get the screenshot of your screen. So we're going to use that as our texture for this. So that's all good there. We can come out there and we'll do factory as well. And open up that map. And again, we want to get the position of the camera how we want it. G, F11 to go full screen. And we go high res screenshot. Plus a one to be okay. You click on the link and you now see both of them in there. So we're going to use these as our thumbnails. So let's just close this. Put them back out there. Okay. And then we'll go to our data table. On which data table, we're going to bring in those images here. So let's import those in. Let's go into our uh, menu, lobby UI, and we'll make a new folder here for map images. And open this up. And we'll put both of these in here. I'm probably going to rename them as well so it doesn't stupid name. So we're going to do arena image underscore underworld. And arena image underscore factory. And obviously you do as many as you need or as many maps you have. So let's go back to our data table here and we're going to use these for this. So search for underworld. And there it is. And go to factory and search for factory. Okay. okay, so now we've got this data set up here. We're going to go ahead and create the selection UI. So in here, we've got our uh, lobby map selector. There we are. And we're going to go to the graph here. So on the graph, we're looking at data table row names in the construct here. I'm going to change the, row, the data table being used here to DT game map. And that's going to get the game mode names, but we're going to change that to game map names. Okay, and that'll go down to here. And we're going to change this index here to game map index. Okay, and it selects that and it updates that. Update mode will come to in a moment. Um, on clicked, we've got all there, fine. Okay, and it's just as update mode. So I'm going to change the name of this to update map. And let's then get the map names and you want to get the DT game map. It's going to break the out row here. When you compile it, you'll get an error. That's fine. You just clean it up and just break out the out row. The name is going to be the name there. So we just need the image as well. And the image is going to be fed into our image 115 here. Let's just rename that. Map image. And go to the graph. And we're going to set that map image by doing set brush from texture. Plug that in and plug in the image. Okay, and that will do there. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is also we want to make it, uh, before we actually go on and do it naturally, we want to make it do the update map straight away from the get go. So, right at the start of the event construct, we're going to do update map. So we're going to do that here. And you also probably want to do the same as well for our mode selector as well. That way you have a default starting mode and default slot starting map. Just go in here. Just call this um, update mode on the construct. Okay. Done. Okay, so saving all that, we're going to go, go add that map selector to our lobby interface. So that'll be lobby menu. And we've got mode selection. We're going to have something very similar to this. Let's go to the player screen, edit the play screen, and then go to the mode selection here. And I'm going to wrap this mode selection here with a vertical box. This vertical box here, we're going to stretch out to cover the whole side of the screen here. And what we'll probably do as anchor wires, we'll do anchor it to the middle. And we'll bring it in the X 50, maybe 100, like so. And on mode selection, 
we're going to put in also map selection. There we are. Uh, we just need to change the default starting thing, but that's easy enough done. Just go into here and we'll just set a default value for this is map selection. Just so it makes it easier for us to test that because when we start the game, it's actually just going to change automatically for us. So it doesn't really matter too much. So we've got map selection there and we've got mode selection. So map selection and mode selection, we're going to select them both and set to fill. And they fill up the available space. Now I'm putting some space in between these two as well. So I'm going to use a spacer to help me do that. And a spacer and put that in between the two. In this spacer, we can either set to fill or we can go to auto and just change the height of it. So in the Y here, I can put it in say 100. And it'll put a gap in between the two. Now there will be other buttons that we have onto this as well. So we'll make some space available for us there too. So I'm gonna make another spacer and we're gonna put that spacer underneath the lobby map selector and set that one to fill and it'll push all the rest of it up like so. Okay, so that will do for now. Um, let's save that and let's take a look at how that looks in game. So I just need to go back to my menu map. Menu, save. Okay, so here we are, and I'm just going to go to host match. We've got deathmatch, underworld being selected. Okay, and I can go into each one and it'll change what mode I've got and what map I've got by changing the name. But the image here isn't coming up, okay, so that's something to look into. Let's take a look at that. And take a look at our lobby map selector. Okay, so we call it update map and it's getting information from our out row here. So what is going wrong with this set brush from texture? So let's break this down. Let's take a look at this and do print string and print out the image that's being used here. So I can put that down there and hit compile. Now let's push play and take a look at what prints out here. So arena image on the world is being used for this factory. They're coming through just fine. It's just not showing the image in its, itself. Let's take a look at what we've messed up. Go into here of view we've got there and then you can see the visibility of it is set to hidden change that to visible fix that with this print string now so i just had the image itself set to hidden that should now solve that issue when i go into here and it should hopefully show maybe not hold on um map section map image visible make sure i've got nothing in here making it not visible uh, no, nope, that's all correct. And we want to make sure the image is brush. Yep, set to image. And that should be fine. And let's take a look what else could be wrong with that. So we can still see the image is not showing. And the reason why that's probably the case is that one weird thing with widgets is sometimes they don't update if you've used them as sub widgets. So if we go to a play screen, for example, and go to the map selection and just duplicate that and then delete the original one and then go ahead and push play. Press match and you can see the image now appearing there. So I want the buttons to appear above the image and I want the image to ignore my mouse clicks. So let's go into fixing that. And um, so we're going to put the image here underneath everything else. So basically where you see you've got these buttons being used, we're going to drag the map image and we're going to place it uh, up underneath everything so the horizontal box appears above it then I'm going to go to map image and change its visibility from visible to non-hit testable self only that way if I click on it nothing will actually happen so if I click on house mode I can then click on here and it will switch between the two so at the moment you can see the image is being very much stretched just because of the shape of the whole screen there so we don't want it to be the case we want it to hold really true so we can use a scale box to accomplish this. So if I go into the map selector here and go to the map image, I'm going to wrap with and choose a scale box. In this scale box, we're going to go to the right hand side and we're going to change how it's going to handle scaling. At the moment, it's going to stretch it by scaling it to fit in the whole entire contents, which we don't really want. What we do want though, is it to scale to fit the Y, uh, so the X axis. So it will stretch it out until the X axis has been met. Hit compile and go test that out. Press match and there you go. So it's no longer a stretch image. We've got a nice clean image coming through 
just fine allow us to choose our map so next thing we're going to do is make a button to allow us to go into that map so there we have it we now got a map selection tool in our lobby menu allowing us to choose which map we want to go into now we can choose both map and mode in the next episode we're going to go through the process of creating a button that will allow us to launch the game into the chosen map of our choice you can watch the next episode right now over on patreon.com forward slash ryan laley where you can catch all my videos early plus many other rewards and benefits thank you to all my patrons and youtube members for their continued support and i'll see you all next time bye everyone i'm ready to play now put me in the game now i came here to prove it i'm ready to do it i can't be afraid now put me on the stage now i'm ready to rage now i feel like an animal stuck in a cage and i'm ready to break out my time my time none of you people can tell me to stop this time